What's up guys? Justin here with DCGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to check out a new add-on for Blender that allows you to procedurally generate trees for use in your scenes. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So Treezy is a tool designed to help you quickly add dynamic trees into Blender. You can get it through the Blender market. Um, I will link to it in the notes down below. But basically, this is a tool that makes adding these individual trees and creating variation very easy. All right, so Treezy gives you the ability to easily add trees to your scene. But then what makes this one unique is it actually gives you the ability to come in here and adjust um, things about the leaves. So like the way that they hang, how many there are, other things like that, as well as giving you the ability to go in and change the color of the leaves for the different seasons. Um, it also has a procedural wind gener generation. So what you can do is you can add wind to these if you want to anima animate them. And so note that there is a documentation at the bottom of this page. I will link to that in the notes down below. Um, they do have some interesting things coming up as well. Um, but if you go to the documentation, it's just going to walk you through how to use the add-on. Now, in order to install the add-on, it's going to come with two files. So it's going to come with um, an install file and then an assets file. We're going to go to edit, preferences, add-ons. And so you need to extract the file labeled assets. It actually says extract this file in the uh, file name, I think. So that should be pretty easy to do. And then you want to install the add-on file that this comes with. And so once you do that, you're going to have access to Treezy right here, and you can set the file install path. That just means that you need to tell it where that folder that you unzipped is. But once you do that, then you're going to be able to pop open this window using the in letter key on your keyboard and you can click on Treezy. And so notice how when you open this up, it's going to have two different kinds of trees. So it's going to have coniferous trees. Note that there's different variations of these trees, which is really going to matter more with the deciduous versions. But notice how you've got summer, autumn, winter, and spring, and you can use this in order to bring those trees in. And so when you bring those trees in, so let's say we're to bring this European ash. We're gonna select this, and notice how you can click on the option for spawn tree. And so when you spawn the tree, what that's going to do is that's going to drop the tree asset in here um, in order for you to be able to adjust it, edit it, other things like that. So um, once this is ready, um, your tree is going to look something like this. And so just as kind of a side note, these actually do look really good when you render them. So they have a really nice look when you render them out as well. Okay, and so when you bring a tree in, notice how you have a number of different options over here. So first off, you've got these options up above, right? So for example, there's the option to convert to a static mesh. That's gonna take your tree and it's going to convert it to a non-editable tree. That basically applies the stuff from the geometry nodes to your geometry. You've also got the option in here to randomize your transforms. Notice how when you randomize your transforms, all of the leaves and branches and other things like that are randomizing in here as well. So you can use this to randomize your different trees if you decide that you want to do that. You can also reset that transform if you want to take it back to the defaults. And so no matter which tree you bring in here, you're going to be able to do that. So if I bring in this black alder, actually let's pick something a little smaller. Um, we'll go with this black alder right here. Um, you're going to be able to edit and adjust that separately from the other trees. And so again, you can just come in here, randomize the transforms in order to randomize the tree size. But now if we click on one of these trees, notice how we have the option down below, or actually we don't, um, but we can get the option down below to actually edit this. So if you wanna edit this, notice how this is all grayed out right now. What you're gonna to have to do is click on the option for enable editing in order to edit this. But this is gonna give you the ability to adjust things like um, the density of your leaves. And notice how this is kind of broken up into the summer leaves right here, which if you bring that down to nothing, now these are going to be kind of the fall or winter leaves. So those don't matter as much um, if you bring in the summer trees. We'll take a look at the winter trees in a second. But you can adjust the density, you can adjust the minimum distance between those leaves it's in here, um, as well as other things like the rotation and the coverage of the leaves in the scene. So you can adjust randomness, you can adjust the seed, other things like that. And then you can also adjust the tips. So I'm going to go ahead and bring these leaves down so that you can see what this does. So notice how these are the leaves that show up at kind of the tips of the branches right here. So you can adjust the orientation of those tips and other things like that as well. 
So in addition, you can also affect the global scale in here. So the global scale is going to adjust um, how large those instances of the leaves that are being placed in here are. So note that you do have these two options in here, right? So you've got the leaves, which I can bring the density down, and then you've got the seeds, which is going to be these hanging leaves right here. And again, you can adjust the minimum distance that these are placed in here. Um, you can do some adjusting the rotation, other things like that. So uh, again, really fully editable um, in that sense. You can do a lot with these trees. Okay, so then down below, you've got some options in here. First off, for adjusting the bark. So you can use this to adjust the hue of the bark as well as like the saturation, right? So, and there's some colors in here that maybe we don't want, but say we were to use like a brown or something like this, you can adjust things like how saturated the bark is in here. Okay, and so one thing to note about this is if we scroll back up, now you're gonna notice that the leaves aren't in here, right? So if you wanna access the leaves, what you need to do is you need to scroll up to the leaves right here, and you need to click on this button right here, which is going to make the particles local. Okay, and so this is where things get a little clunky. Like after you've made these local, what you need to do is you need to come up here and you need to find those particles over here on the right hand side. So notice how that creates kind of this uh, collection of the summer leaves in here. Well, what you need to do is you need to come in here and click on the leaves. When you do that, that's gonna give you the ability to edit things like the hue of the leaves in here. And so you can edit these summer leaves separately from um, the other leaves in here. So if you wanted to adjust the tips, right, you would just have to come in here and um, enable editing of the seed leaves like this. But once you do this, this is gonna give you the ability to set the hue of these leaves like this. So you can set your um, seed leaves separately from your larger leaves in here like this if you decide that you wanna do that. So just be aware that you are gonna to have to um, select these kind of individually up in, in here if you do decide that you wanna do that. Now, um, the other thing that you can do, well, first off, there is a snow option. So if you do want snow, you can use this in order to place coverage on your tree. Note that the snow is really only going to affect the branches. It's not affecting the leaves. So it's not actually adding snow on top of this, but you do have the ability to do that if you do wanna make this look a little bit snowy, like if you're bringing a winter tree or something like that. But the other thing that you can do is you can take a tree and you can add a wind modifier to it. When you add the wind modifier, what it's gonna do is it's going to use geometry nodes in order to move these uh, leaves around and make it look like it's windy in your scene. Now, one thing with this is you can come in here and adjust things like the wind strength. So notice how as I bring this wind strength down, adjust some of the other things, right? Like the particle sway down. Um, you can make this more of a gentle animation if you wanna do that as well. But this allows you to really quickly add this like procedural animation to your trees. And that's really easy. You can do that to multiple different trees, right? So if I come in here, click on this, notice how that's gonna do the same thing. So, and that's making everything on this tree kind of move around. And so you can get a little bit more advanced with this if you only want like parts of the tree to animate. Notice how you can uncheck this or you can uncheck the particles and just use the various groups in here in order to create different things. So notice how as I do this, I'm able to take those different groups and apply a different wind setting to them if I wanted to do that. So um, there's actually a fair amount you can adjust in here when it comes to the actual wind modifier. So this is an interesting add-on to me. It doesn't really have scattering tools built in, but it does give you a lot of control of the particles that it adds to the tree. So from that point, I, I'm liking what they've done with it. I'm excited to see what they do in the future. But love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think? As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.